Okay, let's start texturing this thing. Um, I did notice a uh, slight flaw, a little bit more than a slight inaccuracy. So this is really smooth, and in real life it is pretty sharp. But, you know, just gonna have to live with it. So if you're watching this ahead of time, just uh, don't make the same mistake I did, I guess. Alright, let's... Delete all these reference images, and we will start. Um, actually, let me let me add something to my Inkscape scene. Created this off camera, but we can continue adding to it. So, just type in these letters that I see. So. F U Z E space M dash two O one A one enter G and G this might be the replica because what's it say on a real one? So yeah, G and G is a replica. Eh, the real ones looks looks at blank to me so all right let's start off by getting some of this uh, text detail in there so I'm going to navigate to here bring that in and this is all on uh, this right here so I'm going to say M84 goes on this side, and then US Pat right here, and then PN on this one. So let's do that. All right, so I will create a UV image editor. Where is it? UV image editor and let's color our input maps because um, it'll keep you organized. I'm just gonna do that and then this is the AO so I color that black and the curvature I color white. Alright, that way we know what is what. We can bring these out like here and let's create how many materials does this have let's see let's count so it's got one let me see looks like it's different depending on the model but these and the pins are all the same material so that's one it's got this body material and this case material, and this uh, thing that explodes material, or kind of rips off this piece. So I'll just go to M84, duplicate it. Let's go into edit mode. Don't know why it's lagging. Go into edit mode, and just grab these. Call this metal or something. And I'll just set it kind of dark, darker. That's how this guy has it. And that's a real reference. So let's create it. Let's lower the spec. I don't think metals have spec. I mean, it does a little bit, but I think in real life, all the specular comes from the albedo. So we should just copy that value into the spec. Okay, um, let's create a material for this.
we'll call that, uh, I don't know, handle. This piece, I don't know what to call it. Sign. And then, and I'll duplicate this, and I'll call that inter. Oh, all right. And I'll assign that to this. All right, now let's work on these decals. So, come to UV Maps. We're just going to call this decal map. And just add an image. Make sure we're on the right. Yep, we're on the right material. And it's called bitmap. And add a UV map. Change it to decal map. Alright, and let's go to bitmap. Alright. I want to project from view. Same with, yeah, okay, you project from view. Let's grab everything else and scale it down to like here. And set this to extend. So the bottom says US Pat. So bring that down. Scale it in and center it. Okay, I think that's centered. And let's grab these. Okay. And then put it here. Scale it up to about the same size. Just bring it up. And then uh, center it up. Okay, I'm going to go back to Inkscape and grab that. I'm going to move this. I'm going to change this color to red so I can kind of see the limits of my, you know, uh, texture. So I'm going to move it all, all the way to the bottom. And then this to the right. And then this all the way to the top. Set that back to white. And then export. And now just reload this. Alright, we need to change that to bitmap. And then export. Now reload. Okay, for some reason it saved to my home folder for some reason. Why does it... Okay, bitmap.png export. Export as. There we go. Okay, so now it should be replaced. Okay, in the working folder is where it needs to go. And then delete these two. Now reload. Okay. Alright, that looks about centered up. 
Let's grab this one. Okay. And then just grab this one and do unwrap. These are the same, so whatever. Scale it to the same size. I'm going to move it up just a bit so it's kind of centered. All right. And mirror it in the y direction and the x direction. And that should be centered up like that. So let's go to Inkscape and go to the text tool and just put this to center. Alright, that didn't work, so I guess just add some spaces. Put it in the wrong folder again. Alright, export, replace. Alright, now reload that. There we go. So now I'm just going to save this. And this looks a little bit rotated, like not perfect. So let's try and replicate that. Okay. And it is paint so it's probably if it's got any bump information it's probably outwards so let's add a bump let's add it to point zero zero point zero 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 one Make sure we invert. And this is a, uh, looks like we got metal, painted metal is what this is. So let's uh, create our values, our base layer, I guess, is what we could call it. All right, so I'm gonna start with a metal. So something like this, spec. Just want the same color to be the specular. And we'll just do um, actually, we'll just grab a value copy that and put it into the specular grab another value put it into the metallic and then final value put it into the roughness and our roughness it needs to be like that's looks pretty glossy so I'm gonna say like 0.35 Maybe like 0 0.25, 0 0.2, okay, and um, let's give it just a little bit more texture, so I will
Let's see, what will I do? I'm gonna go to File, Append, and I'm gonna append all my materials. So, Material Library. Okay. Let those all load in. And now I want to add, I want to add an image texture. Let's see, grunge. Yeah, let's just add, actually I'm going to go to documents, asset library, um, tileable textures. This is one I made for my last tutorial and I want to use it. So let's set it to object coordinates with box mapping. All right, and something like that. And then I'll do mix RGB. Set it to overlay. And plug that into the bottom. And I don't want this much variation in my albedo for a metal. Just like that much, you can barely see it. And roughness, or spec rather, keep the same, metal keep the same. Roughness, I want to again overlay. And you can go a little bit more extreme with the roughness. And then normal, I don't want to do anything. So let's stack that up. And this project, I'm going to try to stay more organized. So we'll just call this base noise and properties. Set it all the way up. And let's grab these. And we'll just call that base material okay let's view that you can see that's just gives it a little bit more visual interest uh, but let's keep adding some more so next I'm going to add a grunge texture I'm gonna add grunge wait Okay, so if I go to grunge like this, check it out over here. That looks like a good texture. So let's do a map range. We'll do our little setup again uh, to give it curvature or contrast rather. Mix should be a or my bad math subtract one plug this in and plug that in then it's point one so zero should just be the original texture all right now it's set up Okay, so now we got a little bit of contrast. Let's add another sort of layer. All right, and I'm just gonna add it to the roughness channel too. Okay. I'm just call this 
um, grunge overlay. Let's preview that. Okay, and let's add some kind of edge, um, edgeware, sort of. So I'm going to grab our curvature and take the pointiness and now I'm going to search for edge where image based this is what the node group looks like it's pretty simple um, plug this into our edge texture but make sure before we do that we'll grab a map arrange and isolate the edges by doing that alright so there we go, we got the problem with pointiness kind of coming through. Uh, it's kind of has these artifacts. Let's check out. So our AO baked perfectly clean. So yeah, that's just kind of something that the pointiness isn't as good at. So we can just bring this further down to clamp it. And now we need to add, input a texture. Let's try this one. And I forgot, we want to grab the unclamped one too. Alright, so we can call this unclamped. Okay, and uh, let's grab a map range, set this back to from 0 to 1, plug that in instead, and then we can bring this value down, and that's the same as bringing the clamp value down, but we have the unclamped result. Okay, let's subtract this from the roughness. Because I want the edges to be shinier. So we'll do subtract. That should be in the roughness channel though. And in the color we can add it. We look at that and um, like it's not great but uh, we should just tone these down turn this Okay, let's look at it now and it's just in general too bright so bring our base up okay and now let's create our paint so let's we'll call this um where is it shift p we can call this Edge brightness, okay, something like that. And now let's create our paint material. So I'm going to duplicate this and duplicate this setup. But just add a reroute node. So we can have our normal channel share the same texture. 
just kind of help us um, use our resources as well. Okay, um, paint material. So I really liked this guy's render, like the the way he did it. It doesn't look totally realistic, but it, it looks really grungy. And I also really like this guy's render. This guy did a really good job with the materials. So let's try to sort of copy that kind of material because that's what I see right here and right here. So it's like, let's put that as our reference. Okay. Um, I want to create a material that's like this color. Probably more towards the brownish. Let's grab the hue. And bring down the value to. Okay, that looks sort of right. Plug that into the color. And metallic should be zero. Um, spec, we'll just try 0.5 for now. Roughness, we'll just do that and normal. So let's turn up our color just a bit. Something like that. And then we turn down the spec. Actually, I think the spec is pretty much good at 0.5. I'm going turn the roughness down to like that, 0.3. And let's do the same kind of setup. So I want to just create some grunge all over this. So the first thing is a, let's grab like a scratches texture. So see what I got loaded into this blend file. That's a cutting board, but Scratches 4 looks like it could work. It's got this kind of ugly contrast that doesn't really work to its benefit. I just thought of something. Let me try this real quick. Krita. So I'm going to go to the material library. So Alright, then go to image textures. And drag that into Krita. And then I'll do settings, the filter, GMEC. And let's apply that. Okay, and set these all to overlay. Okay, except for this one. Turn those off, and now export this.
export scratches for dash two dot png okay whatever and just drag it back into blender and let's set it up with object coordinates and box mapping So it looks like, is that a seam? Let's go to scratches 4-2. Well, oh, it looks pretty much seamless. Anyway, let's scale that up like that. And then I'll go to the bump. And plug that into the height. Do like 0 0.001. Maybe like 0 0.02. So double it. Okay, that kind of worked. I'm going to give it. Um, more of a worn look. So let's just add some more grunges. I want to have this affect the color, so mix RGB. Set this to like soft light. Okay, and then for the roughness, I want it to probably add to the roughness, so I want to invert it. Or this kind of map, map range. Bring this from zero to one. To one to zero. All right, there we go. And let's invert that. Soft light is fine. Let's take a look. Okay. And Let's add some more noise, so turn this down by like half. Let's add this kind of distinct paint stripe, so I'm going to go into, let's see, I'm going to go into texture painting with, so create a new image texture, and I'm going to, first off, let's layer that. And we'll call this scratches. And um, let me see. I want to. Just mix using the alpha as a factor. And then I'll create a 
new image. We call this stripe. Create it as 4K. And okay. And then go to this stripe and cut, give it an alpha. And then go to texture paint. Make sure we're in single image. And now let's Okay, so discard, use the right UV map. Okay, we got it set up, and let's see if we can... Alright, we got it set up there too. So, let's set our stroke like that big. Let's set our fall off to this, and our stroke mode to line. Okay, and turn off, turn off occlude and backface call. Okay, something like that. And then we can mix this using a map multiply. So plug that into the alpha, set it to multiply, and then just group this. And we want to grab a mix RGB. So we have a factor slider instead of a value. Plug that in, get rid of that. So now we can control the opacity. And now let's be able to color it with a mix RGB. We want, I guess, black, doesn't matter. We'll just keep it to black. And then this will be our color. So let's set it to this kind of bluish color that we see in this this reference. So first I'll grab this as a starting point. And then actually let's we'll grab this, right? We'll just plug that right into here, but add a hue, hue saturation. So the hue should probably be more towards greenish bluish. So maybe like 0.65. Value should definitely come up, saturation down. Just try and get this color. So I want it to be more of this, this color. Okay, so let's get a value and just try to find this color on the picker. So it's probably a color like like that. Um, 
or like that. So what we can do instead is we'll do mix RGB. I'll try and place that without getting it stuck between anything. Set this to color. Put that at the bottom. Put that in the socket. If we look at that, and that'll change the color of it. So, all right. I want this to be a little thicker, so I'm going to go back into texture paint, bring it so like the brush is like that big, try and keep it even. All right, now let's get our texture paint brushes. So I'm gonna do file, append. Come on, append. Asset library, my documents. Texture paint brushes. Brush, and this one. And then everything else. Okay, um, hold up. They start with uh, S for stamp. So just grab all of these and then append them in. And now go back into texture paint and I'm going to set this to, to black. And let's change to like Let's change to like a grunge alpha like this. Okay, change to black. And instead of using the alpha, we'll just use this black and white mask. All right, let's grab something thicker. Like like this. Set it to black. And just kind of kind of hit it. I'm going to grab these scratch brushes, or this one, this one I like. Let's create some scratches. Alright, and go back to a grunge brush. Like that. And let's add some back in just by dragging these grunge brushes. And it should definitely be glossier, the whole thing. So this is our roughness. I don't want this to be extruded out. So I'm going to grab a bump. 
plug this into into here. I'm going to change the HDR. All right, too glossy. And this material should probably be darker. Uncheck invert. And uh, let's bring the strength down like four times. And I think I want this paint to just be a little bit glossier. Or maybe a little less glossy. Yeah, a little less glossy, so come to the roughness and plug this into here and add it. Make sure we clamp. And let's bring down on the base. Let's label all of these. So I'm going to call that rough. Call this spec and metal. And albedo. And make sure we paste these. And I wonder what happens if you give a reroute name. All right, so that's kind of cool. I think I want to want to do that. Stay organized. Copy selected. Okay, um, I'm going to make this a little bit glossier, so turn the roughness down, but also the spec, something like that. Okay. And then that's what our roughness looks like. That's the color. It's the bump. Let's mix between these. So I'm just going to call this uh, paint streak or paint stripe. And now let's do a mix RGB and I want to make this one shader. So I need to mix every channel. Okay, so that's our bottom layer, and then on top should be the metal. Alright, and let's clamp all of these, and let's create an edgeware effect pretty much exactly like this. Except for we're going to paste. And I want to add a 
make sure we get all of this too. Wait, hold up. Yeah, plug that into the input texture. But I also want to, in the input texture, uh, add the scratch map. So let's see if I, do I have it in here? No. Okay, so I think it's, let me try to find it. It might be in my asset, asset library. I don't think so. Okay, then it's probably in, uh, I think I copied it in here. All right, so I want to copy this. Probably all of these. Copy those. To here I think it's scratches one let me try this all right let's make sure we save this too folder working all right and look for this image yeah, this is what I want. So we're going to tile this pretty heavily. So let's put it right here. Just bring it above. Set this to box mapping. 0.25. And one of these is rotated the wrong, the wrong way. Set it to object. All right, now I want to add it to this. So mix RGB and click add. So you can see what that did. We can tile it a little less and now I want to grab this just go from negative one to one all right something like that and then I want to do mix RGB, set that to multiply. So you got to press the U key. All right. And let's, we can. Um, we could try using a multi-directional scratch texture, which I think is this one, maybe that one. Come on, I know I had it somewhere. If it's not in there, it's definitely in the M18. So just search for scratch. Scratch is 34. Those are too big. 24. See scratches two. Alright, I like scratches twenty-four, so I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here. I'm trying to build up all of this in one place, and that's why I've just called it asset library. Alright, let's take a look at this instead. It's a uh, much more random. And maybe we cannot add this. 
so much. Okay, make sure there's a problem with this texture. Make sure you clamp it before so it's just adding and not subtracting. You can just add a little bit and then add, let's do the same thing here. All right. I think the the thicker strat scratches might not even be so bad. So scratches three. Or actually, they were in the M eighteen somewhere in here. Scratches thirty four. Let's try these. See how they influence the texture okay bring that to there make sure to clamp this one too Alright, I'm actually just gonna remove this. Alright, and let's blend between them now. So that's our metal edgeware. And I want to clamp. Put that in the mix factor. Okay, mix. Okay. And I actually want to invert this texture, so invert. I want this to be thicker, so let's try changing it to that one. And let's take a look at this result. I want to create bigger scratches. Okay, make sure this one's at the box. 0.25. And let's do a map. Map range. Something like that. Let's try. I want to get this edge where to look right before I commit to mixing them. Something like that. Let's try this.
All right, let's. Let's unclamp this. And I want to... Where is our original grunge? So this one right here, I want to multiply it with this. So I'll do mix RGB. Okay, and let's look at our output. We take off clamp, we can see. Doesn't really do anything. Let's add this. Okay. And then let's change this to a bump. And plug that into the height. And try to make it subtle. Let's kind of reel that in. Okay, and now let's do our final kind of uh, kind of mask. So let's. Grab these, and we're going to paint in this edgeware. So go to image texture, and it looks way too, way too bright, way too bright. I'm thinking the metal should probably come down to like there. Okay. And now, with this image texture, I'll just multiply. So I want to create a basically a black mask. So we'll call this edge wear mask. And it's a linear. Well, actually, I guess we have to set it to white because we did the inversion. Set it to white. Set it to black. So let's set it to white again. Okay, so I actually want to switch the inputs, I think. Actually, 
actually undo that. So, instead of multiply, I want, let me think about this. So I want to paint white here, so I want to have subtract, set it to zero. I set it to one. Okay, so when this mask, let's take off the invert. Let's remove that. Take off the invert. and do multiply if we multiply with black I think I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be so white should be revealing edges so let's put the invert Let's remove the invert. And white should be the revealing part. So yeah, switch the inputs. So we have white, we have our edgeware. And if we have black, there's no edgeware. And then we want to put this map range in here, but switch the inputs. And instead change this to something like that okay let's start painting I don't know why that took me so long to figure out but it did So let's go to texture paint, paint on this, and if we paint with white, we can go to text draw, set the stroke fall off to this, and the stroke to space. I'm painting with the wrong color. And let me change it to this kind of sharp stroke. Alright, now I'm going to hit the edges. That I think would have it.
Oh, okay. So let's turn on occlude and back face call. And now we should have more kind of predictable results. So I'm going to put it on the bottom here. And same with this. Let's change the HDRI. So I think our paint material needs to be have more specular. So and a little bit more roughness. Oops, don't go to rendered view, that was a mistake. Alright, let's... Make sure we save that. Okay, and I want to come back to the stripe right here. So go back to stripe, come to texture paint, and go to stripe. I'm going to add some some grunge back alright just add some extra paint back on using the grunge brush and right now there's not really enough of a distinction like you can hardly even tell it's there and I think this metal is too strong it's so let's go to the this right here and for now I'm just gonna make it like an orange non-metal like Like that. Same with this. Because <coughs> it's kind of distracting. <coughs> Sorry about coughing. Um. Let's go to this paint stripe. And I want to plug in RGB curves right here. Just make that very bright. There we go, that looks so much better. So I'm going to move this over.
Okay, um... I still don't think the surface is rough enough. I think it needs some more, like, physical bump, so... Right now the paint material isn't very complex and I think that's what's taking away from this whole whole thing. So let's add let's add this material right here. Let's add that to the bump. Actually let's just use a basic noise texture. Noise. Set it to object. And now I want to create so this is all part of this paint layer. So I'm going to move that aside. And let's just take a look at what this noise is looking like. So it's scale. Let's see. I think these scratches are over the top too. Maybe they need to indent more. But uh yeah, let's add let's add this noise to our stack, so just make sure we get everything. And now I'm gonna add a mix RGB. and a bump okay and let's try that out Okay, so that's what's happening right here. We're not mixing the bump, so make sure we plug that into the mix. And this normal needs to go into the bottom here, or the top actually. Okay, and then we can subtract those edges in. Maybe not. That looks like it's about to break everything. So, let's remove that. Let's do vector. Oh, turn off clamp. Yeah, vector needs to be unclamped. So let's reintroduce that bump. And we want to invert it. At zero, 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 one. Okay, those are way too deep. So those are the scratches. Let's cut them down by like a quarter. And for this, you can see what that's doing. Or can you? What the heck? Is this not doing anything at all? Because it's plugged into the alpha. Whoops. So 0 0.001. 
Now let's look at this material. And let's go to our texture paint again. And I want to paint on edge. So let's save that. Edge wear mask. Kind of just add some somewhere let's go to text draw all right let's add an AO dirt um shader so we can get some dirt in this crevices so We'll make use of this kind of node right here. So we'll bring that out. And I want to duplicate this. I don't think we should reuse it again because it's not like a fine enough scale. All right. So, all you have to do is, let's grab, I think, this ambient occlusion, that's the top mask, grab a map range, Actually, let's do a color ramp. Color ramp. And let's just assign everything to this material while we're previewing it. So, something like that. Let's add the middle point like that. Change that to beast line. Okay, and then uh, just oh, mix RGB. Set to overlay. Change the grunge to one. Okay, that looks looks good. So let's add a dirt, dirt kind of shader. But actually, now that I think about it, let's add some worn edges on the paint itself. So we have this paint stripe. So there's like no worn edge data. If we look at these channels, they're pretty uninteresting. So let's cut these and now I want to create a new image texture I'm gonna call this um, paint edgeware okay and then I'm going to mix RGB and I'm just gonna add it to this one for now Okay, and then I'm going to go to texture paint. Okay, make sure we're working on the right image. Okay, then go to the 
I'm gonna go to this one. This is like my favorite brush. Let's just grab a temporary, or we can just use this one. Is this just our paint material? So if we drag out, we can kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to use this one a bit. And then just mask those away. Let's change to this one. And now I'm going to change to the scratch because this is a good one. Come back to something like this. All right, let's add this one. Okay. Now I'm going to switch to an inverse so I can subtract some. Okay, then I'm going to switch to the corner. All right. Okay, let's let's add this to the roughness. Subtract it from the spec. Just a little bit. And uh, normal, we'll just keep playing. Save this. All right, and I want to use this as a factor to mix between kind of a brown color. So yeah, we definitely need some more color variation in our albedo. So. Let's add group. I think it's like okay, whatever, that's fine. Let's continue painting it. Tap 
texture paint. Let's go to the scrunch brush. Kind of, kind of just paint on here. Let's change to a Another brush. Make sure we're actually painting though. Grab this. save all right that's starting to look a little better let's see how it looks with edgeware I think we're gonna have to tone down the edgeware I think it's just too much so I'll come to this HDR this is like my favorite HDR Alright, so I'm going to work on, yeah, paint edgeware, I guess. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Edgeware mask. For mask. Okay, and then I'm going to grab, I guess, just this brush. Set it to black. And kind of paint, can paint away. So it's more subtle. Do the same thing down here a bit. All right, and let's save that image. How long has this been going? An hour and a half. Um. Well, I mean, this is a starting to come together. With some AO dirt, it'll start looking really good. Um, but I'm going to call it for that episode. All right. See you in the next one. Okay, let's keep on texturing this. So right now I want to... Let's see. I want to remove, the first thing I want to do is remove this stripe from the inside because it doesn't really make sense that it would be painted like that. So let's go into our texturing. Let's go to our stripe layer. Um, okay, so this one. And come to our stripe image. And now I'm going to go to texture paint. 
Okay, let's make sure we're working on the right, right image. Stripe. Okay, and I'm going to change to texture draw. And now go into edit mode. Grab just this object with L. And grab this vert and do control plus, control plus. And now I'm going to grab, I'm just going to grab with circle select in between these. Not too hard to select these. Yep. Okay. And just keep on selecting. Okay. All right. And then now I'm going to go back into texture paint and go to like a black, black brush. And let's hit it with our regular stroke. Oops, change that back to mix. You can see that'll erase it. So if we turn up our strength, let's uh, undo that though. And just turn on our, our mask. Okay. Now, we can erase this um, and it won't be an issue. Okay, just keep painting it away. All right, I think I've got basically everything. So now what I want to do is with a, okay, it looks like I forgot to import my brushes as fake users. So let's go to import or append rather. Um, let me go to my documents, asset library, um, texture paint brushes, go to brushes, brush, and they all start with S. For stamp so S to S right there and let's just take fake user this time see the lowest standard blend file and now you can see we've got all these brushes here so let's add something like this to our edges and I think I'm just gonna select everything Okay, actually, maybe something a little thicker, like this one. Make sure we're painting on. And I just want to kind of to leak over the edges. So. Why is it not painting? Go to options, um, or masking maybe. I don't know why, but it won't let you paint. I don't know. There used to be an option, I'm pretty sure, to, at least I'm, like it won't paint if you're not looking at the face dead on past a certain angle. What? See? So I want to look that up. Um, what is it called? Blender texture paint face angle. The normal angle. Yeah, see that right there? Where the heck is that in the new 2.8? Normal. I mean, it's got to be in here somewhere, right?
Oh, right here, angle. So what if we just change that to 180? That, I think that would fix our problem. Okay, now let's go back to painting something more convincing on these edges. So we don't see like the, the polygons in the texture paint. Just something like this. Yeah, okay, that looks good. Let me try something. So I do have a... Where is it? A brush like this? What if I just drag from the center? That'll kind of give it a base. And then I'll have to come back in and texture paint it with uh, with our grunge brushes, but let's just get in some color on every area for now. Okay. Something like this. Try and start in the middle. Alright, so this side definitely looks the best, so I'm going to go back in and uh, make sure each each of these has its own like um, customly painted grunge. But this base will just, you know, if we miss any spots, it'll be easier to, to like, not see it. Okay, we need some more up here, so let's drag out, rotate. Okay, let's go back to a burnt brush like this and just hit the edges. You might want to do uh, erase some too. So you can just press X and that'll erase and then just, you know, add some back in. I'll add some more over here too. And then I'll hit X. And then I'm going to go back to the circular brush and make sure it's got some, some of these kind of faint details as well. Okay, let's get back to a grunge brush and, you know, paint on here. So what is this? Which way is this oriented? up and down. I might change all the orientations of my brushes to be up and down so that they're easier to use. Because right now they're all at like, they're not all um, at the same angle. So I think it would be easier to use them if they were all up and down. You know, you could build a muscle memory. Okay, let's change to like this one. See, this one's sideways, if I look at it. So it's completely in the other direction. So if I go up, it's sideways, and if I go to the side, it's kind of up. Okay, let's go to something like this. And this one's sideways, but at like an angle, so... Yeah, they, I think I need to make them all up and down. Just for like simplicity's sake. I'll probably do that after this video. Because look how easy this one is to use. You just paint in the direction you want it to go. And it'll go in that direction.
Okay, that looks good. And if we uh, turn off our mask, you can kind of just see it on the edges there, what it adds. So let's save. And uh, now I want to add some some dirt AO. Let's take a look at our so our, our Beto. You know, it's got these edges, which is good. Actually, let's just look at the paint, the paint albedo. So the paint albedo definitely needs some more variation. Um, let's work on, let's grab this and let's name it. So shift P, paint, um, worn edges. And what is this? What does this even do? Oh, this adds in the uh, the color. So from it adds in the color from what the heck? Looks like it. This is set to zero, so it literally does nothing. Okay, it adds in more noise. Let's make sure it's affecting the color and the roughness channel too. So if we go to the color and just set it to, I don't know, color burn. Let's try that. Nope. Uh, let's try color dodge. Okay, that makes it a little more interesting. You can see what it's doing. Let's go to the final shader. So where is that? This one's here. I think that gives it some good color variation. So let's keep that in there. And then we'll have it affect the roughness too. So it's um, albedo metal spec rough. So let's just add that in here. Bring it down. And then I want to I'm using the same texture so we can save the amount of textures because you don't have unlimited textures in Eevee. You can't just uh, paint forever. So let's go back to object mode. Look at this. Um, we might want to change this to overlay. So the dark spots get darker and the dark, or bright spots get brighter. So let's go to our final shader. And you can see what that does. I want to keep it subtle. So like if we have it at one, that's way too much. So maybe just like maybe like 0.125. Do the final shader. And that might even make it too glossy. Actually, no, that's fine. So let's save. Okay, and let's name this so we stay organized. Um, paint grunge. Okay, so paint stripe. And what is this? Paint worn edges. Let's add some more of these to like the bottom here and to the top. So I'm going to go here. Actually, we'll go to the final shader. And so it's subtracting from the roughness and adding to the, no, it's adding to the roughness and subtracting from the spec. So it's um, not as reflective and the reflections are more blurry and bump. It's not doing anything though, which is fine. Okay. So let's. Let's copy that color. So we'll just do an RGB. Copy, paste, and then I'll turn it way up for now, just so we can kind of see it. So I might even make it brighter. So now we can see what we're painting. And let's paint. So I'll go to this image, copy, paste, come here, go to texture paint and paint on that and now 
let's just uh let's just paint some more grunge so I said I want to hit the bottom here so I'll do that real quick I might want to make that more continuous Okay, so it's having trouble painting on such a complex material. So once that stroke is finished, I'm going to go to just here. Let's see if we can do a little better just painting on this. Okay, make sure you paint both with positive and negative. So... All right, it's still lagging. So I'm going to paint on just this texture into a diffuse with this as our normal map. And I might want to mix between Um, I don't know, like red and white. Let's change that for a principled. You can do that with Shift S. Um, principled BSDF. And I want to plug this into the normal. It's lagging. Okay, so I made two more brushes. Um, just one more scratch brush and run one more brunch. So uh, let's continue texturing. I wanna finish up with this paint material. So uh, yeah, I wanted to continue painting the bottom of this. So let's paint on this since last time our performance wasn't really good. Go to texture paint. This is the image we want to paint on, so make sure we have it selected here and here. And uh, yeah, let's just, okay, make sure I have the right brush. So search for grunge brushes. This is the new one that I made, so we can see how it looks. I also reoriented all of my brushes to be vertical, so they're a little easier to use. So yeah, let's, okay, um, got a freeze here, so, I don't know why it's struggling on the bottom of this, like, oh, wait, hold up, okay, so we do have a clued and this, let's see, cursor, let's change this back to 80, All right, I want to just put some around the rim, alright, maybe I won't even view it in a shader, I'll just view it like this. Try and hide these edges. Like right there. Let's 
Okay, let's make sure we hit this edge. It's looking kind of bare. So it seems once it starts having to write to more texture space, since this is a 4K texture, it kind of starts struggling. All right, let's add some more of the, uh, some more texture now so I can invert it. Oops, invert it. You can see that, add some some more texture to it. Let's uh save our image. Maybe that'll help. And I'm gonna set the angle back to 180 so I can paint across the surface. Subtract right there. Same thing with this. See that sharp edge right there, so I'm just gonna try and hide it. Alright, and I want to cover um more from the bottom so if this is like sitting on the ground it would make sense that the dirt collects so if I'm gonna grab this one actually I'll grab a, a thick one like this just add some coming up don't worry if it looks repetitive you can always uh, subtract Okay, so yeah, just keep working on this. All right, so now that I've got it pretty much covered coming from the bottom like that, All right, just uh, helping someone out. All right, I'm gonna change this back to this and just start cutting into the texture. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to change the brush to this one. Okay, so now let's see the final shader. And uh, remember to...
select. I think I changed the color to be incorrect, but we'll grab. Okay, let's tone down this. So I'm gonna copy that, paste it here, and make it more of a dirt color. Something like, like that. And that looks good to me. Maybe let's look at the Okay, so this is adding. I need to change it to mix. Change it to like be a color like that. Let's make it closer to the original color. Okay, now check that out. Okay, that looks good. This looks a, a little bit of a mess. So let's try to clean that up. Okay, so I'm going to go to... Alright, so... Let me change to the uh, simplified shader before I do that, because that's going to cause it to lag out. Yeah, so this is way too much. Alright, come on. Okay, change to black, and then maybe a big texture like this and drag it out. Alright, that was white so it added. So I'm going to undo that and change it to black and then drag it out. Okay, so you see what that did, and now I'm going to do it in the other direction. Okay, now in this direction. This is kind of a struggle, but, you know, this is just what I'm working with. Not the uh, most insane hardware. Let's see I don't know why but it seems like this face just really doesn't perform well maybe I could mask more I only want to paint up to like there so it's fine and then turn on mask Okay, wow, that really increased my performance. Like by just an insane amount. Oh, 
All right, and just gonna add some like right here. And then subtract. Probably the more time you spend on this, the better it'll look. Okay, so now let's view our final shader. Okay, I'm I am uh, I think I'm happy with that. Let's save, and now uh, I'm gonna continue working. Just get this AO mixed in here. So instead of global AO, because I would get this cash shadow, we'll change to local. And um, now let's set up our mix shaders. Okay, so go to mix RGB and so black is going to be the initial one so we want to invert this invert okay just going to come here turn this up mix 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 and then bump I'm just going to leave frame that whoops call it dirt AO. Let's frame this. Call it mix worn metal edges. All right. Drag all the way up. Sorry for uh me keep answering Discord. I guess I'll edit it out, um, but that just kind of makes it a pain to edit, and it I can't render as fast since it's harder to render in uh, FFmpeg. Alright, plug that into the factor of each of these, and then I'm just going to do, for now I'll just do a simple color, so let's do something dark and kind of orangey like that. Make sure this is in the factor. Rough or spec. Probably like 0.4. So what is the spec normally? Okay, our spec is 1. For the paint and then subtract it. Okay, so our spec is 1, so 0.4 is going to be a pretty drastic um, thing. Roughness, we want this to be pretty rough, like... 0.6 maybe. Oh wait, that's metallic. Metal, zero. Wait, no, this is metal. Sorry for uh, being confusing. That's metal. Roughness, I'll do 0.4. Or roughness, rather, I'll do 0.4. What is this? Specular, 0.4. Okay, let's see how that looks. And then we'll adjust from there. Okay, I think we need to contrast our mask, so if we look at this, let's add some levels, so it's just a color ramp, we'll view this, and I want to put things more towards, more towards black, so something like that and then I'm gonna change it to B spline because that's kind of gives a smoother result do this now now let's view each of our 
one, so we should probably add some texture to this, but that looks fine. Um, mix, what is this, the metal? So yeah, it shouldn't be metal. This is our spec, so yeah, that makes sense for the spec to me. Um, and that's our roughness. So I should probably turn the roughness up a bit. And uh, yeah, let's create a kind of a dirt shader. So it doesn't need to be uh, very complex, just let's add some noise, scale it up, make sure it has object coordinates. Something like that. And then we can add some roughness and some distortion. Eh, just a little bit of distortion maybe. And then I'll do a color ramp, color ramp. Okay, and I want it to be this color. Oops, delete, delete these. Change that, change them both to this. I wanna make this one a little bit darker and more saturated. Kinda compress it in, set it to B spline. Okay, and I'm gonna make a simple shader out of this. So let's view that. And then I'll do a bump. Okay, so plug that into the height. And just plug this into the normal for now. Alright, like that. And that's way too strong. So 0 0.0001. Let's set the spec to, I think we had it to 0 0.4. Specular. We should probably set it even lower because like Actually, 0.4 is probably good. Roughness needs to come up. That's probably a little bit dark, but, you know, we can always change it. Plug this right into the roughness, then do a map range. Our low value, we want to be maybe, maybe 0.5, and then 1 at the highest. Something like that. And the bump, let's make that a little stronger, so 10 times stronger. Okay, and now let's plug that in. So plug that into the color. See how that looks. And you can just bring up some more of the variation. This is the metallic, so just leave that at black. And then for the roughness, let's put this in the roughness. See how that looks now. All right, so somehow... I've made this less rough. Let's look at the final material. Oh wait, no, this is the specular, my bad. So let's mix, oh, crap. Okay, let's plug that into the specular. Actually, let's just plug this into the roughness and take a look at the specular. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. So it should be less specular. And then on the roughness, yeah, now we can see the roughness is higher. And now let's add our bump. So let's just, we want to plug this into the bump, right? And plug that into there. Let's delete the shader. And let's view how this looks. But I don't want it to be bumped everywhere, only on... Uh, the dirt surfaces. So let's grab a mix um, RGB and make sure we clamp this. Alright, let it compile. Compile, come on. Alright, set this to multiply and we want to plug in this shader right here, but we might want to clamp it a little bit harder. So if we look at this, uh, you can see the bump is really kind of affecting everywhere, and we really only want this bump to show up in these areas. So let's remove this and okay, undo that. Clamp the whites down quite a bit, like that, and change it back to constant. 
or linear actually, my bad. And maybe just, actually we'll put it back to beast blind. And then just add another black. Let's change that to black. So now we can control how much sharper it is. And then multiply that over our bump noise. Why is there anything in the factor? Or, all right, so let's go into our node graph and just remove both of these. I want this to go into the multiply. So now if we look at the multiply, this is what's gonna be bumping it. So let's contrast this even more. Because I really don't want any of the bump to come through here. All right, so that looks that's what it looks like multiplied. I'm going to change this back to linear. Or let's try cardinal. Um ease maybe. Maybe like that high. And I thought we changed this to use the green channel. Oh no, wait, we used the blue, red channel. Okay, so now we take a look at Alright, I'm just kind of getting confused in the node network. All right, so this is for the color and all the material definition. We just want to look at that. So that looks fine. And then for the bump information, I want to contrast it a bit more. So I want to look at the inverted. Let's set it back to like that. And I want so if we add more black, it should become more black. Okay, 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 hold up. And we add more white because it gets inverted. So let's just look at this. So the black is going to be the area that gets bumped. So we'll just add more white. Okay, let's just look at the bump now. There's... All right, now let's try to look at our shader. And... It's a little bit too strong. It's a little bit too strong, so what we can do is, um, what did I call it? I had it earlier in this node group. It was like the slider that I could use to multiply right here. I'll just call it multiply mix okay so I'm gonna do a multiply mix now if we view this that'll control the strength 
see more or less okay so let's view that so I want to add a little bit more so this is all the way and that's just some of it let's let's view here Okay, so that's the color. Uh, metal stays the same. The spec goes down. Maybe the specular shouldn't go down that much. That's why it's so much, so much darker. So what if, if we turn the specular back up, back up to like one or whatever it was. Then it'll be brighter. I think the bump is probably fine. All right, I'm happy with that. That looks good. I think let me look at the specular channel let's turn the influence of the roughness for this way down so that's these so maybe like to that that's right okay there that looks much better to me Okay, let's make sure all our images are saved. They are. And let's uh, finally start working on this piece right here, this inside. So let's pull up our reference. So, looks like in real life, these are actually separate pieces, but I modeled them as one, which is you know a mistake but there's nothing I can do about it right now you can see yeah how it connects so there would actually be an indent not a bevel but whatever I guess if you're watching this before you've modeled it you should probably do that what we can do instead though is I'll just model I'll model this as the same material right so what we can do is go to edit mode unhide everything and let's just grab that and do shift H and I want to give this the material of the M84 alright and then this right here up to there I want to give that the internal material and let's start doing that so for the internal material um, it looks pretty simple it just looks like a metal -y material so I'll just add a RGB and it's the way you can kind of tell just by looking at things if they're metal is uh if the reflections are kind of colored the the color of the object so you can see this highlight it's all like yellow, but this highlight is white, so that means it's a. Uh, generally, that means it'll it's a non-metal, and generally, if the co reflection is colored, that means it's metal. So, first thing we want to do is, let's look at that as our reference. Okay, and keep it pulled up. I'm going to make this metal, so I'll just grab a value make it metallic and put this in the color and then let's create a new material call it top and then just select 
select that and select this. All right, I guess I need to just remove. Just grab that, or right, just come to the side, and then do plus one. Give that the top material. Now, if we go back into look dev, it has its own material, and we can go back to our internals. And uh, let's give that that kind of yellowy material. So you could like look up the material color for gold in uh, the PBR encyclopedia. I know it's in there. So something like maybe something like that. That looks good. And let's do this. Um, and this paint, I think, is a non-metal. So let's do let's do that as the very first thing. So let's first I want to grab this right, and then press Shift H, and then if we go back into texture paint mode, that'll be the only thing we're working with. So let's create a new image texture. New and uh, make it 4k and I'm gonna call this internal red stripe something like that plug that into the output and let's paint on this so we'll put it in there and in there and I want to come to texture draw and set our Let's just set our or set this to full screen. We set our stroke fall off to this and our stroke to line. And let's pull up our reference. So you can see it comes about to the bottom of that third hole. So let's actually unhide everything. And now in the masking, I just want to grab that vert my bad that vert press control plus um, maybe that many times and then go to texture paint with material masking and then turn off occlude and backface skull and now let's paint just a line probably about it doesn't really matter how big but we want to place it like right there and then just draw a straight line I'm gonna redo that so it wasn't really straight I don't think there's a way to make it straight oh hold alt okay alt to make it straight didn't know that so just get it until it's a point where you like it like that okay then save and this can be hmm I guess 16 bit why not all right, and then let's uh, let's work in our material editor. First, let's define the rest of our values. So, another spec and a roughness. Spec and roughness. 0.15 is what we had it at. Oops. Bitmap. What is this? Oh, that's our decals. All right, so we don't need that in there. Oh, let me just do this so I don't forget. Really quickly, really quickly. Change to our M84 slot. And these are our decals, right? Let's add them to our base color. So right here at the beginning. So we'll just do a mix RGB. And, and then I'll do a mix. Or plug that into the factor. Just preview it. Alright, so it doesn't need to be there though, because that's not, it needs to be on the paint. So just control X, because this is our initial metal that we reveal in the worn edges. So in the paint, we need to add a mix RGB right here. Set our decal as the factor. And now change this color to like, um, plug that into the bottom input. Change this color to like an off-white. 
and now we can view our shader and we should probably change the bump right set it to like maybe half of this distance because I don't think paint is that thick just look at it like that and maybe like over two again all right that looks good we might want to do something like this but for now let's work on the internal so go back to our internal slot and go back to texture paint view that okay and we want to do a mix so this is our first first layer so let's name it uh, just base mat right that just sets our base material values and now I want to do a mix RGB and basically every channel except for the normal and let's make that like another layer I'm gonna call that um, red mix and this is very clearly like a glossy red paint so plug that into the mix factor we can just do RGB to BW and if we do this we can use our node wrangler and it'll automatically connect it to the factor since it's gray to gray for color just make it like red maybe like a red like that um, what is this metal so that should be zero since it's non-metal mix factor um, that's for spec. I'm going to keep the spec at 0.5. I think 0.5 is good. Roughness though, that this roughness, it's really, really low. You can see how sharp that reflection is. So maybe something like 0 0.2. 0 0.2. And take a look at that. Maybe even sharper, like 0.1. And I might want to bump it outwards just a little bit. So I'll do bump. And right now this is white and black, so it'll raise the paint value, the red paint, which is what I want. Set this to height. And then just set this to like 0 0.01. That's probably even a little strong, so 0 0.001. Uh, that looks better to me and it doesn't really look good to have this super dirty like this looks really worn down you know like if you found this you'd probably be uh think it was dangerous <laughs> you know might explode in your hand i know it's a flashbang but still let's uh so let's grunge this up first thing i want to do is kind of mix this um, this right here so let's hide everything so we can press shift H and now go back into texture paint and I'm just gonna use these grunge brushes to I guess subtract so it should be pretty easy now that I've um, all oriented them vertically to just drag left across the surface and it'll subtract them okay so we could probably do this with our shader and then you know make sure you uh, aren't only subtracting but you can add to I'm gonna set um, where's it fall off set this to 180 it might be useful since I'm painting across to just turn off occlude and backface call. That way we won't get any of these ugly lines. You can see like there. So let's see if we can kind of erase that. And then come on, try and paint it back.
can see any of these harsh lines. Just try and get rid of them. Let's go to a thicker brush, so something like this. And I want to erase. All right, let's see how that looks. And if we go back to object mode, we can see how that looks. And uh, maybe that doesn't totally make sense, but we can try and straighten it out. So I'll just go to side view and try and make it level. And go to front view. Give it the same treatment. Alright. Save that. And I think that looks good. That's a good base that we can build upon. Alright, so this one is uh, very grungy. And uh, so yeah, let's start just building that. Let's see, I'm going to do grunge 01, the one I built inside a blender and you can see this was made completely with blenders nodes and if I go to I know there's a way to do it maybe you have to be in the image editor um, view repeat image you can see it's 100% tileable okay kinda of bugs out but you can see uh, yeah no no seams you can see the repeating pattern but this was made inside a blender Blender is not really as powerful as Substance Designer, that's for sure, but uh, you can do some some decent things. So let's mix this. Do mix RGB. So yes, yes. And that should be good. We're going to call this Basic Grunge 1. So this is our red stripe. And this is grunge a one. And let's grab our image. Grunge. I think this was grunge a one. You can see that. So let's go into texture paint so it's isolated. And uh, give it box mapping, which is just the same as uh, triplanar mapping and. Uh, you know other programs you can change the blend value to get rid of the seams and for scale that looks good to me just one any lower and it's you know it's too too big any higher maybe that's good okay and then I'll plug that into there instead of mix I'll do overlay do something like that and same thing for this something like that and let's view that all right that added quite a bit but let's we can do more so let's add another grunge texture so I'm gonna do grunge this one, uh, you can kind of see, I kind of have a bias for certain textures. I use them over and over again. So mix, uh, mix RGB. And I kind of hope by releasing these videos that more people use Blender as a texturing tool and uh, maybe it'll get some more support. I don't know. But... I think we're getting pretty decent results without without using something like substance. So let's change this to grunge. The thing really is about texturing is you need a lot of like assets in your library. So like these brushes I have, I made all those. All these grunge textures, I either made them or took them. And you know that just takes time. So kind of a massive advantage that um, I see in substance is that it's got all these things already for you and obviously you can extend that by using substance designer so it just kind of makes the opportunities um, like almost unlimited but 
anyway. I'm not going to buy substance. I refuse. Probably be better off if I did, but, you know, I'm just a hobbyist. Um, I don't really feel like spending money on this. Okay, let's view it in here. Change that to overlay. Scene before and after. I'm going to chart it all the way up. Color. Yeah. Let's go to object mode. That looks pretty good. We can do more. Okay, so let's uh, let's call this. Let's rename it. Grunge two or something like that. And uh, this definitely looks closer to the. To the thing than ours but you know I modeled it off of this reference image so that might be the reason it's not totally accurate but here you know the distance is kind of the same as ours anyway that's not important I'm already already done with the modeling it's all locked in now um, so yeah let's add effects did I not? Alright, so I have to re-import my material library. So append. Um, put it here. I think it's material library. Right here. Okay, so blends. Procedurals, material. I'm just going to import all these. That's fake user. Okay, let that do its thing. Might take a little bit. Okay. Um. Now I'm just going to do effects, uh, let's try grunge, or for, I want to do smears, or smudges rather, so smudge one, and this, these things are basically just what we did here, just kind of automated, so it's in a node group, and these strength values are just the strength of the mixes, so plug albedo to albedo, Keep the metal and spec the same. Uh, roughness to roughness and normal to normal. Alright, um, yeah. So now let's go into texture paint view so we can see what's going on. And uh, you can change the scale here, but scale looks good. Albedo strength, just lightly. Roughness strength, again, just slight. Normal strength, yeah, no, no normal strength for this. But uh, you can see that's significantly faster than this. So you can package these up and then use them in any sort of project. And it's if I were to redo this, I would add spec and metal and just kind of have them as a pass through so you don't have this ugly setup. But, you know, it's fine. Um, okay, then let's package that up in a frame. And we'll just call that smudges1. And let's, let's do dots. Oh, wait. Let's see what that is. Needs object mapping. So this is a procedural and procedural noise I made. Uh, no sense using that. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for effects dots one. So yeah, rough to rough, normal to normal, and then just do this. 
something like that. All right, and let's see how this is. Just kind of, yeah, brighten those up. Roughness. Let's go in here. Change the roughness to overlay, maybe, and try that. No, let's just put it back to add. And just, yeah, kind of turn up the roughness a little bit. Okay, so now we got a pretty dirty um, procedural, well, you know, semi-procedural. It's using images, but uh, you could throw this on literally anything and just replace a normal and it would work. So let's package this up and just call it dots one. And uh, I think that's good, you know, for now. Let's do, let's do this material now. So that's the top. So we'll go to top. And uh, let's go back to our, let's just go to one of these blank materials. Copy our baked maps. And paste them in. So. Yeah. Um, plug that into the normal. You can see what that does. Gives us these uh, bevels. There's a little error right here, but won't be able to see it after we add a material. So let's kind of look at this material. And uh, I'll talk about how we can kind of think about breaking this down before we put it into the shader. So you can see this highlight here is white. And uh, the material is black so that kind of indicates that I think it should be a non-metal right here you can definitely see it's kind of gray and with a white highlight so yeah let's make it let's just make that as our base right something like this so we'll add an RGB and then three value nodes and plug that into come on there and we'll package this up. We'll just call this base material. And I really hope, you know, with this video, I'm hoping, first of all, I'm hoping it helps people because it took me a lot of time to like to kind of develop a workflow that I'm like semi confident with for texturing inside of Blender because there's not. There's really not a lot of content out here on YouTube on how to achieve even something basic like this material, you know? So, let's start setting these values. So, gray, something like this. Uh, metalness value, we want it to be non-metal. Uh, specular, 0.5 is good. Um, roughness, and then again, 0.5 is probably too high so we'll try point six and I think this should be brighter like that and you can see I can't really tell but it looks like there might be some noise on here that's not just because of the image so Okay, this image it looks darker than I have it so let's try and emulate this result right here so I want to turn it down but the roughness needs to come down to something like 0.4 okay and probably turn spec the spec should come down. This almost looks like a metal to me. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell because, you know, if it's like black, obviously you can't have like a black, black metal, but, you know, if it's black like this and the highlight is like a dimish gray, you know, it's hard to follow the rule. Metals have their own colored reflections because, 
obviously it looks like a white reflection, but it may be. So for cases like that, I usually just try both. And for metallic, oh, so I had it as a metal and I wanted it as a non-metal. That's probably why it was looking weird. So let's turn down the spec. I'll turn it up actually. Turn up the roughness. 0.5. And let's see. Does it look better as a metal? Yeah, okay. See, and when you have a metal, the specular value almost doesn't do anything between the 0 and 1 range. So, huh, okay, so this is kind of difficult. Let's try non metal. Set it to like something like that. The specular should be usually 0.5 is what you start off with and then kind of adjust from there. So it should definitely be darker. So spec back to 0.5. Let's change the HDRI, sometimes that can help. So in the studio HDRI, that's looking more close to this. Reflection should probably come up like that, maybe even two notches, uh, one notch. Change the lighting again. So, just kind of test out different lighting scenarios and try to make sure it looks good in all of them. Bring that up just a slight bit. And, okay. That looks sort of decent. Let's go into uh, edit mode and unhide everything and now we can grab just hit select and then do shift H. So now if we're in object mode we can see the whole object and in texture paint uh, we can just see the texture paint. So let's go to text draw and just set the strength to zero that way if we accidentally draw anything while in this view we won't mess anything up. Alright um, let's start adding. So I'm just going to go to what did we just do we just did this metal or internal so what we can do is we can just steal this and paste it right into our node graph just uh, connect everything up where it needs to be like here and there and some oops like there SY zero oops come on whatever just re reorganize them Alright, this was a uh, kind of a little mistake, but it's fine. We'll just keep going. Then add a bump. So metal should be zero no matter what. Roughness can stay the same. Or spec. Uh, uh, roughness, yeah, it should be affected. And bump, we'll see. Alright, first thing, let's look at the color. So we can see before after let's set the texture of scale so it should probably be a little bit higher than this maybe something like that uh, maybe a little bit less okay put that in there I'm set the bump to 0 0.0001 so you can see it's just got a little bit of bump texture and then roughness I'm going to turn that to overlay again, so 
darker spots will get darker, brighter spots will get brighter, and view this in the shader. Something like that. Go to object mode. And it is a little dark, so I'm going to turn this up in the value. I get up just a little bit. And then turn down this overlay. Okay, let's try that. And I think the bump should be stronger. So let's set that to like five times the strength. Okay, and I'm not totally happy with how that looks. And that may partially be just due to our modeling. Let's change the lighting up. This is kind of a really flat lighting. Uh, let's try this one. Alright, um, I'm going to pause this and we'll continue on this material in the next one. Really the main main thing we've done so far is just the metal material, which, eh, you know, looks a little bit clean. I mean, I know it's got all this grunge and stuff on it, but still, we might need to add some, uh, like, AO dirt or something. Uh, we need to do this material. This is a separate material from this. This looks like... It looks like the same material as like a cast iron skillet, kind of. And then this... Might actually just be the same material as this canister. Let's try that out before I leave the recording. So I'm just going to grab that, press L. And go to M84 and then assign. Uh, not bad. You know, we will still have to uh, come back and paint on some of the dirt because we didn't consider that. But overall, that kind of matches our reference a little bit. I think this is glossier, though maybe not. And I want to get this red stripe along here. Actually, I think it is the same material, but with a red stripe. All right, well... I'm going to stop the recording and see you in the next one. I'm going to download a whole bunch of HDRIs before the next one, though. So I'll be able to come back and test this out in a whole bunch of different lighting scenarios. All right, and I'm going to do that from HDRI Heaven just to let you know. Okay. Okay, uh, let's keep going on this black material. So, yeah, let's just set it back to the top and pull up our reference so we have an idea of what we're doing. And uh, now that our base values are set, I want to change this. So the thing is, I think this is getting the M84 material, but it doesn't really look like it because of how strong the AO is. So let's just try and let's turn that down and see what it looks like. So let's just turn it down just a bit, turn it up. We might come in and paint like custom, custom AO, but for now it's good. Uh, let's go back to top and I want to, uh, I see these little dots in here. So let's add that. So I'm going to add an image texture. Okay. And change this to dots one. All right, make sure we have box mapping. And let's kind of check which dots I want. Dots one. I think dots one is what I want. Let's see, dots two. No. Come on, froze up. Okay, dots three. Actually, dots three is probably what I want. I don't know what this is a picture of. I can't remember. I remember one of these is a, I think this one, I don't know. One of these pictures is a picture of my mouse pad that's just uh, been highly, highly processed. 
All right, so we can kind of see what that's doing. Let's set the scale so there's more of them. Something like that. Now I want to grab a color ramp. Or let's probably do a map range first just to see if we can if we can get it with that. And if we can't, all right, that looks like about what I want. So let's add that to our node graph, mix RGB. Uh, affect only the albedos rough and not normal or not spec or metallic at least for this layer I'm gonna call these dots and let's add that to our color also make sure you clamp that yep add it. let's view the color so I want to do add make sure you clamp so I don't know why it's subtracting so let's do also let's blend that 0.25 that'll get rid of that edge let's do clamp so for some reason it must be a bug that clamp didn't work so we can just clamp it here because that was yeah that's a bug I'm pretty sure because this should be clamping it from 0 to 1 and it's not Hold up. Gotta gotta plug my YouTube channel for somebody. Um Okay, so here we go. Uh, okay, let's add that to our color just a little bit. And then same thing with roughness, because these spots look rougher, they're less reflective. Well, really, they're not less reflective, but the reflection is uh, less sharp. Less reflective would be uh, the spec. So if we want, let's see this. I'm going to set that to add because I don't want it to delete the information below it. And if we view that, might want to turn the color down like that. And... Let's see. Okay, so let's remove from the spec. And in general, let's increase the glossiness, like, or the roughness just a little bit. And uh, yeah, subtract from the spec. So I'm going to come, oops, undo that, hold alt and drag with the right mouse. That actually might be different if you're not using right click select. I'm going to just kind of talk, talk a minute, but right, select, right click select is definitely the way to go in Blender. It's how it was uh, before 2.8. And really, like, everything is just so much easier because you're selecting... Uh, stuff and editing stuff won't get like intertwined you've got more of a balance between right click and left click so you're not like left click dominant anyway uh, yeah let me just let me just say I think right click is the way to go all right might want to turn that down just a slight bit and make sure we're clamping that and okay, something like that. That looks that looks good, but I think we need let me change the lighting real quick. I got tons of these now. They're all free on HDRI Haven, so shout out to them. Let's try just kind of clicking randomly because I don't know what they all look like yet. I don't know which ones I like, which ones I don't. Let's try Try that. Okay, I want to turn the color down just a bit. That's too dark. Something like that. Okay. Alright, that looks good. Um, 
Let's do some more though. Um, what what else should we add? Sometimes the thing is with reference, you got to make it like more interesting than real life. You know, you don't want to make like a super clean clean object. I mean, sometimes maybe you do, but most of the time, if you're making like a game model, uh, you want it to look interesting. And an easy way to do that is just to kind of add grunge, make it looks like it's been worn worn down. You know, heavily used. I mean, but if you think about it, though, it really doesn't make any sense at all. Like, these are one-use items. You know, you throw it, it flashes, flashes your enemies or whatever, and you don't recover them. Alright, so... Let's... I'm just going to do the same smudges I had. I think that's uh, another thing. Another thing is... Very, very much. After this project, um, I'm going to convert probably all of these, like Grunge 1, Dots. I already have a Dots one, but like all of these, just package them up like this. That way you can really easily add them to your node network. And you won't have to set them up every time. You know, for tutorials, it's probably better not to do that. Like show you the whole process is probably better, but... You know, if it's not a tutorial, if you're just making this for yourself, you'll uh, greatly increase your speed if you've already got all these things made. Alright, something like that. Let's see how that looks. Alright, what happened? I think the normal map is broken. No, that's not it. What happened? Something is clearly broken. I don't think it's the lighting either. No. So, it's because our normal map is not plugged in. The albedo is plugged into the normal map. Okay. Let's. What is happening? I'm going to remove that. Okay, okay, okay. So. This is the spec, this is the roughness, and that is the normal. Alright, that was my mistake. So let's add that back in. Smudges, one. I think I set the scale to like uh, seven and a half. I set the albedo to one. And the roughness, that's the spec, so plug in the roughness. Maybe I, maybe I didn't have it as seven, but something like that. Maybe like that. The right roughness was probably good where it was. Uh, color is probably good, like right there. Normal, I want it to be off. And then plug it into the normal. And something is not plugged in, which is the roughness. And why is the normal map broken? Okay, because I plugged in the wrong thing to the normal. There we go, there we go. So, that's, here's before, and here's after. That's a uh, pretty decent result, but one thing I kind of forgot that we should do is uh, add edgeware effects. And let's do that. So, with something like this, it's pretty small. Um, I think we're better off painting edgeware like we did with this dirt down here. That was kind of painted along the edges. So they're more like worn edges than metal edgeware like this. Because this doesn't look like metal at all to me. It looks like, not polymer, but... Uh, I don't know what kind of material it is, but it doesn't look like metal, so let's set up a node group to do this. So image texture, let's grab a mix RGB, I want it to add to the color, um, subtract from the specular, leave the metal. Alright, let's, let's uh, name these. Uh, okay, so I want that to be 
smudges like oops smudges okay and this one I'm going to change to okay it doesn't need to affect the normal and it does need to affect the roughness though so just duplicate that and put it in order so it's easy to read and parent it up and let's just call this worn edges and actually now that I think about it let's do a first a base of worn edges procedurally so I'm just gonna grab that okay something like that let's do a map range from negative one to one so that's pointiness right there and this is our AO based one so they both have problems but you know that's why I just recommend baking out both of them what we can do for this is just push that back a little further till it kind of disappears okay something like like that okay and let's see which one's better that's AO that's pointiness I think I'm gonna go with pointiness let's grab our image base edgeware uh, I've already showed you this node network uh, kinda giving away the secrets here but it's whatever it's whatever you know let's go to image texture and I like to add grunge I think it's just grunge so I re-imported everything for some reason again box mapping and box 0.25 and it's way too big right now can't really see anything you know turn the scale up just before you kind of kind of see the tiling maybe like that you can set it even higher because it's only going to apply on the edges so maybe something like that plug that into the input texture and this into the input edge mask let's see clamped and unclamped okay so let's do this I want to I want to customize this node group so I'm gonna do a map range actually first let's make this unique so I'm gonna call this like this and rename it to come on let me grab it edgeware new because we did use it in other parts of our node networks so we need to make it unique so we don't break anything that we've done previously so now I'm gonna kinda upgrade this on the fly uh, with a map range and this clamp value gets plugged into the uh, from men I believe this is this goes into our value and this can go into unclamped. Let me just check this right here because we did do this upgrade but outside of the node group right over here. So where is it? Yeah so we did it right. The clamp value goes right here. So if we go back to our top and now let's preview this. So we can clamp it like that and if we go to unclamped it should be the same exact thing but with uh, without being clamped basically and if we tighten it up now both results are the same so that's a little upgrade to the node group and let's do that and uh, maybe just a little bit more like that and it's important um, let's say you want to add an image right here don't clamp it before I mean you know you can do whatever you want play around with things but generally I don't clamp anything coming into this node group because when it subtracts it in here it puts it into negative values and then brings it back into the positives with this so you know 
the math there, it kind of goes into the negative values, and then when you add the edge textures, it'll only add back the edges back into the positive, basically. Uh, but, okay, let's keep going. Um, let's see. I want to do a mix RGB. I think it might be talking, talking too much. The more, the more I do these, the more I get comfortable just kind of sitting in my room talking to myself. It's a little strange, but whatever. I mean, I guess that's just kind of how it is, making YouTube videos and tutorials. So leave the spec in the rough and the normal. And I'm going to set this to... Right, so the edges are white, and I want them to be more rough, so I'm going to subtract it. No, I'm going to add it, because I want it to be more rough. And make sure we clamp this. So wow, uh, this is already really rough. We just look at that. And for now, just mix it with the same color. Okay, shader is broken. That is fine. Take a look at this. Oh, I already set up the worn edges, so... Just delete those. Now, if we check out the shader, come here, you can see what that is doing. It's adding to the edges. So now the edges are really rough. And another thing you can do, this is a trick I learned from watching, uh, probably going to say this wrong, but his name is Eugene Petrov. He made a tutorial called Handgun for Video Games. I recommend it. But on the edges, you can do a mix RGB okay and then mix it with the original normal information like this using this as a factor and that's gonna take away the bump information from the edges so it's, let me show you how this looks okay so it's kinda hard to see maybe we should use the clamped so we'll use the clamped value instead come on grab it Erase that from the factor. Or wait, whoops. My bad. Put that back in. So black is going to be the original normals. And here, I can show you right here. You can see there's no edge wear on here. Or no, like, bump information. So it looks smoother on the edges. So let's plug that back into unclamped. And it'll give a less strong result, but it's still there. And then for mix, what I'm going to do is drop in an RGB curves. Okay, and I want this to be a little bit on the grayish side, or orangish, I mean, because it doesn't look like a metal, so I'm going to bring up the reds and probably... How do you make orange? What is it, the combination of red and green? Let me Google this. How to make orange from RGB. It's about 100% red, 67% green, 0% blue. So we can, uh, yeah, just get rid of that. Turn up the reds quite a bit and turn up the green just a little bit. Alright, now that it's got some color, we can dial it in with hue saturation. So maybe turn up the value. Something like 3, or maybe like 2. Maybe 2. What we can do is also turn up the... Oops, go to the color, turn that up. Now if we go to the mix, you'll kind of see what that's doing. And then we can use our mix multiply that we made earlier. This node group, it's literally just a multiply. That is nothing, but whatever, just leave it. Plug that in here, and now we have our factor control back to mix between them. So that's a little trick, a little pro tip. So let's bring that up a bit. Let's kind of see what it does. Oh, 
don't want it to be subtle, so something like that. I want to maybe desaturate that a bit and bring it up in brightness. Let's view that. Okay, for roughness, we already handled that, and here, I don't want it to be totally clamped, but I want to add a color ramp. So we can see in the unclamped version, there's like no transition, so that would be, go from like having all this bump to literally no bump, and the clamped version, it's like, oh, this is all gray, so it still has some bump, so anyway, we'll just add a color ramp and bring the whites in like that. So we still have a little bit of a transition. Might want to change it to B-spline. Let's try. So here's linear, here's B-spline, here's cardinal. Um, whatever, they all look about the same. Except for B-spline. B-spline is pretty, pretty drastic. So let's, here's before and after. You can kind of see it right here. It's subtle, but, you know. With materials, uh, most things are pretty subtle. You know, the most important thing in materials is having correct base values. These, these one, two, three, four, five values are the most important values in the whole node network. Because, I mean, think about it. This color and this, they're pretty much similar. From this view, they're almost identical. So, yeah, correct base values is the most important thing. All right, let's do this material. And... So this is kind of a tricky material, right? Because it may be metal, and it may not be. Because it's pretty dark, and the reflections are white. But let's go to here. I think I called it metal, so... Yeah, that's kind of a giveaway of what I think it is. But if we see here, these are the same material. It's like... The albedo is probably like 50, maybe to 60% gray. And the reflections are, are white. So I'm going to say it's metal. And that's just kind of on intuition. But, you know, things like this, where the reflection is yellow, definitely should not be, definitely should not be non-metal. Alright, let's work on this. Been talking too much, too much in this, in this video. Okay, okay, okay. Base values. Most important thing. RGB. Value. Value, value. Okay, I'm going to set this to 1. Plug that into the metallic. And sub, or base color. Spec. And rough. Oh, another thing. Apparently... Hold up, where is it? Spec. Okay, we need to change our render engine. If we change our render engine to Eevee, you can actually use the specular workflow right within Blender, the PBR spec gloss. I mean, it's still rough, but you know, just invert that. You can use the PBR spec gloss workflow in Blender. Uh, I didn't know that till you know, a little bit ago, so I thought that was kind of interesting. So if you find any PBR spec gloss tutorials, you can follow them. For other software, that is. Okay, so metal, one. Color, let's bring it to here. Maybe even a little darker. Something like that. Spec. Yeah, spec really doesn't do much on metal. If you keep it between zero and one. I don't think it's actually... This is just a theory. I'm not really... An expert, but I don't think metals have specular, do they? All their all their reflectance comes from the albedo. At least that's how it works in the 
PBR spec gloss workflow. Yeah, roughness. This is pretty sharp of a reflection, so turn it down. Not that sharp though. Like maybe like that. Maybe 0.35. Let's check this side. Okay. Let's see. Let's try different lighting conditions. So I'm going to look at another picture too. You can see there, I think it's actually pretty rough. So maybe I have it. Our rough. Okay, let's. We can also name these, by the way. So rough, spec, metal. And that can, uh, you can name any node. That can make things helpful. So we can call this albedo. All right, so let's put our roughness up. Okay, and uh, maybe just go through them, you know, rotate around, see how things look. Oops. Uh, just kind of getting a feel for how the material is. Alright, and this is a pretty simple simple object. It doesn't have a whole lot of depth, so there's not really a whole lot of texture you can add to it. But what we can do is just, I'm going to use these effects that I made. So I'm gonna actually go to the Blender Artist thread. I did this in my uh I'm going to go to this Blender Artist thread I made. Okay, let me log in. I'm gonna have to blur this out. Ah. Okay, um so let me go to my account, activity, topics. So I actually started this kind of texturing endeavor, I don't know, June 2019. That's when I started, that's when I created this grunge pack and uh, took all these image textures and kind of created these. This was my first uh, kind of trying to get edgeware. And uh, all right, this is the, right here, this is the material I want to copy. You can see what it is. So I do grunge one, scratches five, and then smudges. So that's the final material. So I'm gonna do grunge oh one. Plug that in here. Oh wait, no, not that. Grunge not P, P for procedural. Effect grunge ones. Plug all our things in here. And I'm going to and grab these. Just plug them in. And now let's view the shader. Turn off the normal. Increase the al let's go to the albedo. I'll cr increase it, and the scale needs to come come up. Something like that. We can turn it up pretty high with objects like this, where it's not a lot of flat surfaces. It's kind of hard to notice tiling. Let's go to the roughness. Okay, that looks good. You can see pretty quickly we've turned that into something more interesting. Okay, and then I did scratches. Scratches 1, I think. No, scratches 5. Scratches 5. Okay. And I want to go to albedo. Let's set set that up a bit. Keep it subtle. And then go to the roughness. 
Okay. Check that. That looks uh, pretty good. Change the material. Uh, not the material, the uh, environment. And this is a little strong. I think that's this one. Yeah, so just turn it down. Remember, subtlety. Subtlety goes a long way. Like this, not subtle. This is a little more subtle. Maybe we can turn it up just a bit. Change the lighting up. Alright, I'm going to turn this albedo strength and roughness strength down. Albedo, kind of turn it up just a little bit. The roughness, turn it up just a slight bit. You don't want it to go past one. Okay, so these are clamped, but still, I don't want it to be clipping. Alright, something like that. And then this one. Let's do that. And let's add our grunge, uh, grunge image texture. Grunge. I think it's this one. Talking about this one. My, one of my favorites. I only made it like a week ago. It's already one of my favorites. So, you know, it's got to be good. Change the object, box, 0.25, it's pretty standard. Turn up the scale, and I want to put this before these effects. I might want to turn this up even more. Just hold shift while you do it. And, uh, okay, we can cut it like this, and then order everything. Okay, then add a mix, RGB, one effect, albedo, roughness, and that's it. So let's frame that and I'll call it just like noise one. Let's plug it into the color. Alright, and let's change it to overlay. Okay, something like that. Let's go to the roughness. Again. Okay, check that out. I'm going to change it to overlay. Okay. Let's view from here. So. Let me turn up. Turn up the scaling. I set it like that high, you still can't even notice really any tiling. Maybe there, there, and there, but. Oops. Let's turn it to like. Oh, my nine. Let's view the material. And uh, let's turn our base roughness up. And I'm still not happy. It doesn't really look. Like this, and I think that might be due to the color. Now, let's set the roughness back to what it was. Let me let me view this final output maps. Okay. We've got no information in the normal. That might be uh, kind of throwing things off. So let's add a bump. That might be why it looks so kind of plain and boring. Let's also turn this up so I can read it easier. Okay, um, plug that into here. And let's do point zero. Let's preview this. Um, Make sure you're using the color, it's the information, 
set that to 0 0.0001 to start and let's check that out okay and okay let's maybe do five times as much let's do five times as much as again that's too much, so I'm going to divide by 5. Um, maybe I'll do 2 times as much, so times 2. Okay, that looks good. I think it's still a little too glossy, so I'm going to turn down this overlay. Uh, maybe turn the color down a bit. Okay, um, for now, that's all right. Let's add some uh, grunge AO to the black material. So, Control B, Control, Control C, and Control V. So a lot of this stuff that uh, I'm doing is like reusable. So, yeah, you can just kind of, I don't know, keep that in mind, I guess. Why did it do this? All right, bring these over here. I want to plug color into color, metal into metal, spec into spec, rough into rough, normal into bump. Make sure it's coming here. Okay, and now same thing, normal to normal, rough to rough, spec to spec, metal to metal, albedo to albedo. And let's check that. See how it did, just so automatically nothing's really showing up. So let's check this. So I don't want to use the local one for this one. I want to use global AO, which I think is this one. Let's see that. Yeah, now you can see how that affected that. So here's before and after. And now let's make sure it's properly affecting all our channels. So that is... It's using this, right? And inverting it. Maybe I need to clamp? I don't know. No. Okay, so let's bring these white values. Let's bring this. So I want there to be less of this dirt, so let's change it to uh, linear. Come here. And if we bring in this white, that should kind of erase some. I don't know why the heck it is so, so strong. I think it has to do with the way that your eye perceives light. And uh, it's not linearly, so I think that's why it looks like there was such a drastic difference. So maybe turn this to beast blind. But make sure we still have black at the bottom. Come on. All right, let's just do ease. All right, let's try that and check out the color first. Turn it up all the way. So I want more of it just like that. Check out the metal. Yeah, everything's still not a metal. So that makes sense. This is spec. Right? Specular. So I want to mix that with something darker. Because it's dirt. It should be less reflective. Let's go back to our M84 material. This one. And uh, 
Okay, so taking a look at this, right? Why? Oh, that's because everything was already, already basically specular of one. So if we turn this down any further, I just wanted it to kind of match. So if we turn that down, see what that does. Might want to turn it down just a little bit. So like that. I think that looks better. All right, uh, let's go back to our top material. So spec, yeah, dirt is less specular than whatever that material is. Uh, roughness, it's more rough, so it's brighter and normal. It is uh, raised above, raised above the surface. But right now, it's too harsh. So let's copy this. And that is still too harsh. So let's come here. And that is way too intense. It looks like dirt has just been like smeared across there so let's cut it in half let's cut it in half again and cut it in half again and let's view this this AO So I might want to see on this side, it's uh, it's not catching a lot when I turn it down and on this side it's catching too much. So this is like uh, an opportunity to paint away the problem with our grunge nodes because I like, you know, to about there. That looks good, but on here it's just overwhelming. So let's just get it to where we like it on this side and then I will paint away the other side. So just make sure each channel is good. All right, save. And now let's set up this for painting. Okay, um, let's go to image texture, create a new one. I'm gonna call this uh, I don't know, top, AO dirt, mask, make it 4096, hit OK, let's change it to linear, and then mix RGB, and do the same thing here, and we want to mask this, so multiply, change it to 1, so let's come here, load this into our image editor. And right now it's not letting in, let's see, yeah, so there's no dirt on this material. That's our edge wear, not our dirt. And if we change this to white, it'll 100% be there. And I think I want to, you know, not have the spec be so drastically different so maybe just like slightly like that and roughness is really I think where this will come in and let's uh let's turn down the roughness to like maybe 0 0.9 at the max okay then come here and I want to turn the bump up too oops don't do that and I usually just do when I want to turn it up, I usually multiply it by a factor. And if you mul keep multiplying it by the same number, it's going to get exponentially greater. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So 
instead of linearly incrementing it, that can kind of uh, get get out of control if you keep increasing it by 0.1. It's easier just to go to a uh, really small value and then, oh, it's not intense enough, let me double it. I find that easier to think in, or I find it easier to think like that. All right, let's, uh, let's paint away. Been wasting too much time, too much time. All right, go to texture paint. Make sure we're on the right image. And okay, let's go into edit mode. Grab, just hit select, hit shift H, and now go back to texture paint. And I want to view just this channel because it kind of shows the problems. Let's change the rotation. Yeah, the top is too much too, but it doesn't matter because that's covered. But, okay. Let's see if uh, our performance is going to work at a... I don't know if our performance is going to be good enough to paint in the PBR viewport. If not, we'll just paint on the regular viewport, or the emission viewport, rather. So I'm going to grab this one. I like this one. And paint with black because that'll erase. You can see what it's doing. Just kind of go crazy. You can always add it back or reset it. Let's go with something thicker like this. Alright, this is. Not really any technique to it right now, just want to remove what I can't, uh, remove it where I can't really see too well, or see the base material too well. Alright, let's add an th even thicker grunge texture, so something like this. See what that looks like. Make sure we're painting with black. Okay, and then really just paint away at a lot of this. Can rotate the HDRI. And I think this bump right here is coming from the dirt right here. Let me check. Oh, no, it's not. That's just kind of how the material looks. Alright, let's. I want to view the color information because that's way easier to determine what I'm painting. And let's just paint back some of the bottom here. Yeah. Because so I think that makes it look interesting. You know, generally, it'll look more interesting if you hand paint it. Let's set our angle to 180. And I want to paint back in here. Same thing with this side. And around here. Actually, maybe not. Maybe not on the outside, but on the inside. Actually, you won't even be able to see because it's covered. So don't waste your time. Um, let's drag up like here. Oops, I'm erasing. Wait, no, I wasn't. Why can't I paint there? That is so weird. Why can I not... Let's view just this image. Oh, it's because I'm multiplying. Not overlaying, so... If there's nothing there to begin with, it won't appear. So maybe instead of multiply, we'll do overlay. Or we can just do um, maybe linear light. 
I'm not sure. Let's try. True overlay. Let's try this one. Oops. Just remove that. True overlay. I don't think this actually follows the overlay formula, but let me just try it anyway. Wait, what? What is this? This is not what I was thinking of. Overlay. Okay. Let's just scroll through the blend modes. Okay, color dodge. Green. I guess we could just do... We set it to overlay. What do we set this? Is the bottom texture? See how that looks. Okay, I guess that sort of works. Still gonna have to paint a lot away, but. Just kinda get. Uh, base, base down. Okay, undo that. Make sure occlude and backface call need to be on. That's why it seems like I've been undoing everything I do. Okay. Let's go to Something like this. Okay. Then go to something like like this. And subtract. Or cut in. Okay, let's check. Hmm. What if we just set these both to zero? So we're not even using the AO. This is completely not procedural anymore, but that's fine. Should end up looking better anyway. All right, I'm going to add here. And again, this is just kind of like a more time you spend on it, the better it'll look. Let's go to our PBR viewer. Okay, want to remove that. Let's change the lighting. This side looks pretty good, but just that kind of coming in kind of bugs me. Let's also add some around here because I kind of forgot that was a thing. So let's go back to texture paint. And I'm just going to do, go into edit mode, press Alt H, grab this and this and press shift H and that'll keep it hidden okay now grab the grunge brush Let's try that one this is the new one I made and why is it not painting it is it's just subtle so it's kind of hard to see but it definitely is working so, turn on that, kind of paint along the edge here, in white though. And 
and uh, now that everything's vertically oriented, I can drag in the direction that I want, want it to go. So that's kind of cool. So I guess that's just like a tip when you're making your alphas, make them vertically oriented if you want to be able to use them easily within Blender. And uh, okay, if we wanted to, we could add like just some more micro surface variation by just zooming in and subtracting. Okay, let's subtract along this edge. And same thing with this one. This maybe I don't maybe I don't know, maybe it hit hit something on those edges. Okay, make sure you save this image. And let me check. Alright, how long has this been going? About an hour. So, I guess before the end of this video, I want to make this red stripe. I really like the way that looks. So we'll set back that to our principled and come to our M84 material. Okay, and come to the... Where is it? Let's just zoom in. Paint stripe right here. So I'm gonna come to this and go to text or go to edit mode. Grab that. Do Shift H and go to texture paint. Grab that. Put it in here. You can probably close that so we have a bigger viewport. Go to stripe. Text draw. Change it to black. And just. Set our strength to one. And just draw across. Okay. And save it. Go to object mode. Now let's add a red stripe. So the red stripe looks like it comes. Let's see if I can find another reference definitely comes higher so maybe to like the bottom maybe like halfway so let's use that as our guiding point and just copy this paint stripe so come here and I'm going to copy the same setup so mix uh, mix and bump Just add another image texture. Do this into here. And that should go into here. That should go into here. Just copy that, change it to add. And this should go into the height. And then let's preview that. Change it to like a red. Okay, but we need to make a new image. So new. Uh, we'll call this red stripe. Hit OK. Let's paste it into here. And come from here. Wait, no, texture paint. Go to red stripe, or red strip I guess, I don't know, whatever I called it. Let's go back to edit mode, press alt age, and instead just hit L and then go to texture paint and it'll be masked. Alright, turn off back face call and occlude. And I'm going to be in texture draw, and then I want it to come to like right right there maybe hold alt to make it straight oops do it with white though
All right, and now it's been kind of dipped in red paint. So let's save that. Okay, let's go to our final texture. And let me look at the... So, it might be in our interest to um, add this texture before these noise overlays. But... We should also clean this up, but for now it's fine. So let's go back to texture paint, and I want to grab a grunge brush, so something like uh, this. And now in edit mode, I'm going to do Shift H. Okay, and now let's kind of. All right, actually, let's go back to text draw. and make sure it's, you know, all the way covered. Now we can go to something like that and, you know, kind of erase. Make sure our fall off is 180 so we don't get any clipping. And okay, just kind of, yeah, give it some strokes, summon Okay, turn on back, include and backface call. And, you know, just get some variation. Okay. Make sure we still have like that. Okay. Let's view our final material. Go to object mode. That color is looking like too pastel y. So let's make it a little bit deeper like that. So that looks good. But let's save. And I'm saving with the intention of uh, keeping this as like a backup point if this next little experiment doesn't go well. So in the in, uh, note editor I'm going to okay so basically I'm gonna move these I'm gonna move these actually I think it would be easier if we move these right before the grunge and the grunge and uh, whatever so shift D right because if you think about it this is like a like a timeline, right? So a base material, brand new. And then it got scratches, and then it got grunged up, and then it got worn edges, then it got so worn that it wore down to the metal, and then it got like dirt on it, right? So let's see how this goes. So now I'm gonna grab these, right? Anything I don't want, and I'm gonna press control X. So make sure we're viewing this, right? Okay, what's going on? If I press Control X, should delete it, but keep the connections. And you can see, yeah, that worked. And now let's move these right here. Move this back a bit so we have some space. And drop that in here. Okay, and then what the heck is this? Okay, that is the, uh, these right here. So let's plug that into the color, albedo, spec to spec. Spec stays the same. Same thing with metal. So let's just, you know, kind of, we'll just rename these. Metal. Metal. And then this is the roughness, so roughness to roughness, and then normal to normal. 
these are already all connected and then just same thing color to color these are already fine roughness to roughness normal to normal all right so now this is the uh, moment of truth did it work come on all right there we go um, it worked but this kind of became more pastel -y because this grunge is color dodging it so we can see maybe that's not it where is it I guess it's just because we had to do that because it was uh, so dark in the beginning so let's come here and let's turn that down okay so now we're basically good now if we look at our final albedo this should have some more texture in it and uh, I want to clean this up so let's do that paint stripe come to just copy that name search for it go to texture paint and press alt H and just look for it and I want to just grab that and do shift H and now let's make sure we have a clue to back face call on so we don't get anything in there and just kind of kind of fix this okay so I want to go with a bigger brush let's use this one and this is an error right here so just oops I want to paint with white just to kind of hide it kind of hide these perfectly sharp lines to where it's kind of pixelated just kind of break it up you know so on here we can paint paint the insides oh wait no don't do that don't do that there's a reason they're not painted it's because uh, that the paint stripe doesn't go there so maybe we can paint like here but I don't want this painted oops undo yeah okay that looks good make sure our fall off is 180 I think that's per brush which is why it's why it's like that what the heck 180 enter oh I guess you can't go past 90 because I guess if it was 90 degrees you wouldn't be able to see it so whatever that's understandable all right just yeah get some along there Uh, yeah, get, get that. Still, just kind of make it so these lines aren't so obviously pixelated, because I want it to look grungy and not, not pixelated. Like right here, there's a very sharp transition. So just kind of like that. And if you want, you can turn the strength down, but... I think it looks good like this. So what we can do is do take this down. And then just turn it up. Yeah, you can see like that. Okay, I think we basically got the bottom. Maybe we should add some more right here. And right here. And maybe right here. Come on. Okay. 
Now let's fix the top, like this, for example. So just with an eraser, you can come right down here, do that, and then just kind of do it something like this. Oops, too big. Yeah, and just, you know, kind of kind of go across. Cuz the theme of this asset is like heavily worn. You know, wear and tear. So, it's fine if it is looking like this. Now let's do maybe half strength and just okay actually I want to fix this so I'm gonna paint away then kind of paint back over it. Let's look for any more errors like that. I think we basically got them all so now with half strength I'm gonna come in and kind of repaint over where I took away. Make sure to paint in both directions. Okay, here's an error, so. Okay, let's go to that view, and that looks really good in my opinion. You know, maybe this isn't perfect, these black parts but I think this uh, M84 material looks really, really good. So let's make sure all our images are saved. Save all images. Okay, shift space, because I was accidentally playing. All right, um, I'm going to take a break, and I'll come back when I have fresh eyes. All right, so come on. You got to be kidding me. It freezes here right at the end. All right, here we go. Is this not recording? What the heck? Alright. Alright. Let's uh, try and finish this up. So, I mean, if you wanted to, you could call it done right here, but I want this to be, uh, you know, pretty high quality. So, let's um, come to our paint material. Paint stripe, scratches paint worn edges so let's preview that and I want to hit these edges because we didn't hit them so go into edit mode grab that and do shift H all right and then go into texture paint and we'll just preview this shader and now we what is this the rotation Okay, whatever. If we go to this one, change our image that we're painting on. All right, that didn't work. Okay, so it did. It did work. It's just the strength is really low. Let's get text draw. Okay, I'm gonna change this back to the default to just. Um, not sure how to reset it, so I'll just do it manually. Space, smooth. And change this to black. Okay, come on. All right, there we go. It's working. Let's go to a brush like this. Strength all the way up. All right, there we go. Now things are working. And if we preview, let's see if performance is going to be good enough. All right, that looks good. Go to stroke or fall off. 
yeah, 90 is what I want. I think that's as high as it goes. So I'm just going to paint on here. Um, maybe something like across here. All right, let's do Alt H. I don't want to take a look at it. Take a look at this. And I want to add some in here on the top. So let's go grab this and this, and then do Shift H. And just kind of hit it. In here okay and let's view the albedo okay Let's save, and now I'm going to do the metal um, worn edges. So we do Alt H. How is this working? So we've got these, right? And we can paint on this to reveal them. All right, let's do it on this right here. All right, so. I'm going to go back into edit mode and isolate that with shift H and make sure we're painting on this image. Same thing with here. Then I'm going to go to text, text draw, and I'm going to change to this fall off. Alright, my viewport is uh, having some trouble. Oh, because I'm on the wrong image now. Um, just come back to... See, sometimes when you hit Control z it'll change your image, which is uh, annoying. So just come back to this. Discard. Discard. I'm gonna come back here. All right, go to texture draw, change to white, something like this. Are you serious? Come on. Edgeware mask, okay. Why is this like... Text draw. Stroke. Fall off. Just try to think like if this were to fall on the ground which parts would it hit? So just kind of hit those those edges but uh remember to keep it keep it subtle and don't overdo it i might use some some texture like this
and then it would probably hit across here pretty heavily. Alright, so let's go back. Let's grab a brush that's thicker. Let me hit that. Hit it hard. But now that's that's too much, so I want to come in and erase the sides here. And it's being a little laggy, so let's just do this. And just kind of paint. Paint away. Alright, let's hit it with a bigger brush. Let's undo that. Okay, same thing with this. Just make sure it's subtle. Okay. Let's view that. All right, looks good. Let's save and come back to uh, text draw. Just kind of erase. So it's looking like that. Okay, and then go to object mode. Kind of see that. And it's full, um, you know, full context. Okay, so those look a little clean. I think I'm going to come back and come back with like uh, maybe this brush and just kind of break up the edges erase some okay that's a little too strong for me so I'm gonna turn down the strength try to erase some of this Okay, especially want to get rid of that little bottom piece. All right, now I think it looks good. Let's save. Let's take a look through our channels just to see if everything looks good. Okay, that's the metalness. This is the specular. This is the roughness, uh, normal. Okay, so I'll save. And then image, all our images are saved. Let's work on this top material. 
And I think with this, I think these might be uh, like going in the wrong way. So if we look at this, this is the input, or this is the input. I want this dirt to be raised, so invert it. And now, let's see if that is right. I can't tell, that looks eroded. Okay, so actually don't invert it. But we need to erase some off of here. Because right now this is all dirt. That's why it looks like indented, because there's too much. So let's paint on this one. All right, and go to texture paint. Um, unhide everything. Grab this and isolate it. Okay, and now we should be able to just kind of erase some of this. Clean that up so there's not like such harsh edges. All right, now let's view that. That looks much better. So I'm gonna save this image. All right, um, let me pull up some reference. I think I might just call it there. We might wanna just, if I look at it, uh, this right here. We might want to grab this and this, right? And put it onto this metal because there's currently no dirt on that. So go to the internal, grab that, do Shift H, go to Texture Paint. This is by far the simplest material, I think, out of all of them. So let's paste that. Control V. Let's just view this mask. And how does it perform? So we want to use the this AO. Okay. All right, let's go in just to the shader editor, bring that out, and I'll just mix this. So, albedo to albedo, metal to metal, roughness, or that's spec, spec to spec, roughness to roughness, one, two, three. Wait, what the heck? All right, yeah. Spec to spec. Roughness to roughness. Normal to normal. And then let's connect up our mask. plug this into the height 
Oh, wait. Okay. Let's bring these over here. And to make sure, instead of bringing this, we need to bring it here. Now let's look at these before we connect them up. So, if I want there to be more, Is even working? Okay, it's slightly working. There we go, let's do that. And then here's the what is that, the metal? Yeah, just mix that with black, then this is the spec. Just make it a little lower. That is the roughness. This is the bump. So, off, on. I mean, let's plug all this in. Color to color, metal to metal, spec to spec rough to rough, normal to normal. Get rid of specular tint. Let's preview that. All right, and this is uh, tiled too much. So, we can just see the before and after. We'll just mute these. This is before, that's after. Uh, you know, slight difference. But let's save. And I think I'm going to call it, uh, just say it's done. So, you know, the black material. Mm, you can keep working on it, but I'm gonna actually one thing, one final thing. If I load up my pure ref, load, load reset, it's done. On one of these, you can see this kind of smeared, so I want to do that. So let's go to the M84 material. This is our text right here. Go to texture paint. Copy this. And copy this. And I'm just going to only work on this. And now just make sure you're saved. This uh, could not, not work out like I want it to. So I'm going to go to the smear brush doesn't seem to be working I 
Oh, it's because I'm painting on the wrong UV map. This takes the decal map. So. All right. Let's just copy it how we see it. So make it small, the strength low. And it kind of comes. Kind of comes down. And we can view the final material. And this part kind of comes up. Turn up the strength a bit. Same thing with this S. It's a little smeared. So let's do Alt H. I'm just going to grab this piece and isolate it. Might want to do the same thing on, on the P. See, it's a little fuzzy. This part kind of smeared in. And there's a little streak that comes out here. The dash is a little bit, a little bit smeared. And then let's grab a brush like this and cut, cut through the M. So make sure you're Something like that. Let's keep uh, smearing though. Might want to smear this too. And same thing with the one and the seven. I'm just going to smear it all just a little bit. You know, just so it looks like not not like perfect, you know. Okay, let's you know do that a little bit more. And the same thing over here. Kind of hit them all. And then might grab uh, this brush again, kind of do some cuts. Okay, same thing over here. All right, and uh, that looks better. All right, let's bake out our final images. So we need to, I like to come to the material tab, delete this, nothing's using it. So we have four materials, so it shouldn't be too hard. We just grab a UV map. All right, and then pick this. Grab an image texture, 
and create new and just call this baker. I'm gonna bake them at 4K, not 32 bit float. Um, okay, I'm just gonna talk about this and then I'll, I don't know, speed through it, time lapse, maybe just a cut. So bake as albedo and normal, bake as sRGB. Everything else, bake as non color. Um, and I save them as uncompressed 16-bit PNGs, and then I'll convert them to 8-bit PNGs and 8-bit Targas and GIMP. Okay, so let's just set this up. So just paste them in every single material graph. Okay, then come here and locate the albedo for each material. Just plug it into an emission. All right, and then come here and just for each material, make sure this is the selected node. All right, save. And let's set up our bake settings. Come on. All right, I'm gonna bake with cycles. I'm gonna bake with CPU and uh, I'm gonna set these to one. Uh, let's see. I don't think my GPU can handle baking this. So, CPU will be fine. Go to uh, light paths. I'm just going to change everything to 1. Uh, 0 for these. Okay. I don't know if that actually will increase baking performance, but... Uh, kind of thought it might. I'm going to change this to 64 because I'm making with CPU. Okay. Um, then come to the bake. Uncheck selected active if you have it. Change to emit. And then I'm just going to change this to let me see. Let's go to a UV editor. Actually, I'll just go to the... Okay, I'm going to undo whatever I just did. Until I'm to there. Alright. And now I'm just going to change that to like 64. And then bake. Alright, that baked pretty quickly. The MP7 took a long time to bake because had a lot of materials and stuff. All right, so something went wrong. Let me change the UV map to this. Okay, now. Let me bake. Okay, then I'm going to go image, save as, and let's go to uh, final bakes. I do 16 bit PNGs uncompressed. And I'll just call this albedo. I wonder if you can save. Targa. I don't know if that'll save as a 16-bit Targa or an 8-bit Targa. I guess you could save it as a uh, whatever. I'm just going to save it as PNG because I know that will work. Albedo.png. Okay. Save. Next I'm going to bake the uh, normal. Or actually I'll change this back to gen generated. Let's go through the materials, bake the metallic. So just go to your shader, whatever's plugged into the metallic, isolate it. I think, uh, again, a Python script would be really helpful here. I'll look into that. I've actually uh, 
had uh, quite a bit of thought about making an add-on last night. I was thinking about it uh, for automating all this because I can't imagine it's that hard. All right, come to the bake and just hit bake. Okay. Image. Oh, crap. Discard this. Change it to non-color. And now I'll bake again. That was my bad. Alright. Image. Save as. Just gonna save it as 16-bit RGB. With no compression. Save that as the metal. All right, next we got spec. 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 And spec. All right, then come to our image. Just make sure it's selected. And then we're still on non color and just bake it. Okay. Let's let it and do save as spec sixteen bit R G B. Okay. And then I want the roughness. Let's see, materials. Roughness. Roughness. And roughness. Okay. Okay, so like that, 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 and that. Okay, just uh, bake. Alright, image, save as. Roughness, 16 bit RGB, no compression. Okay, change this to generated so we can change this to sRGB. Now just plug in your shader. And we're going to make the normals. Okay, something like that. Just wait for it to load. Select the image. Okay, come here. I'm going to change the sampling to 4. Maybe even 8. And then change this to normal. And then just hit bake. Okay, this one's going to take a little longer. Uh, I guess we got 8 samples. But this should give us a uh, a better result because uh, not sure exactly if this is how it works, but pretty sure it'll cast eight rays from each pixel uh, and then average them compared to if it just shot one ray. So that may not be uh, technically right, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Okay, um, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Anyway, I guess we can just admire our model. I don't know. 
do a little a little lighting change. Let's try this one. That one. That looks kind of cool. Okay, and then we do image, save as, 16-bit uncompressed PNG, RGB, just call this normal. And then hit control S and save. All right, now I'm going to add a triangulate modifier. Make sure, make sure you kick Take uh, keep normals and then do file uh, export wavefront obj and come to and it's this working final bakes selection only geometry apply modifiers uh, write normals include uvs don't write materials actually might as well um, don't triangulate faces let the modifier do that because it'll keep the normals and then hit M84 flash bang and then hit export all right delete this and save and uh, go to file view okay then we'll import our OBJ. Okay, I'm going to copy that path. Import OBJ. And paste it. Change this to the shader editor with Shift F3. Alright, so we've got these slots. So Actually, we only need one shader, so let's grab M84, and I'm just going to delete this MTL, go to Albedo, just bring them all in. So Albedo and Normal should be sRGB, everything else should be non-color. Oh wait, no, 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 this should be non-color too. Alright, um, base color to base color. Metal to metal, spec to spec, roughness to roughness, and get a normal map node. And now if we go to the uh, material preview, you can see that everything has transferred fine and it's now just like one. Uh, one set of textures, but right now there are 16-bit images, and I want them to be 8-bit images. So let's save this, right? Just save this in our final bakes. We'll just call this final exported. Just call it M84. All right, now I'm going to open up GIMP. Okay. Let's just uh, drag this in. Go to image, precision, 8-bit integer, and this will dither it. Uh, I just do the default Floyd Steinberg dither. And then export as then I like to create a folder called 8 8 bits and just call this albedo.png and again I'll do no compression and 
let me just remove the alpha channel and then I'll export it as this again okay and then I also want to export it as a targa so export as dot uh, TGA and then RLE compression is lossless so just keep that enabled and discard and then do the same thing with the metal uh, image precision 8-bit and uh, there is no alpha channel so that's good export as 8-bit okay export export and then export also is a targa okay let's do the roughness now or I guess the normal that's next file um, for precision 8-bit convert File export as normal PNG. Export it. Okay. Um, and also export as a Targa. All right. Discard. Let's do the roughness. Okay, no alpha channel. File or precision 8 bit convert. File export as this. Export. I wonder if GIMP has uh, scripting capabilities. Because this is just like a batch image conversion, basically. Okay. Then do image precision 8 bit convert file export as uh, spec PNG export export and then do Also exported as a Targa. Targa. Export. Alright, so that's everything. Now as like a final thing, I'm not going to show you rendering because this is a simple asset. Now, if you want to see that, that's in my uh, uh, MP7 tutorial. But I'll show you how to get this set up on Sketchfab. If you're interested, just log in. Okay, load that up, click upload, and drag in your OBJ, and click upload files, just say M84 flashbang, a stun grenade, I don't have any upload tokens so I can't publish, but I can still, uh, whatever, just give it a description, done with Blender or a tutorial on YouTube and uh, now go to edit 3d settings or just hit uh, save first then go to edit 3d settings go to the materials just click texture import texture and copy this directory and then do anything that's a PNG because uh, if you do, if you use the Targa um, Sketchfab doesn't really support Targas it'll convert it to a PNG anyway and I don't know how it really does that so I always just leave it how it is alright let's add our metalness map metal specular specular And how do I remove materials? I 
I don't know. I guess this automatically had different materials, so. I'm sure there's a way to delete materials. There must be. Uh, roughness. Do normal bump map. And uh, don't flip the green channel. Alright, how do I... Let's see the help center. Let's see, is there a way to delete or remove? Uh, remove materials, Sketchfab. All right, whatever. Um, I'll just do it manually. It's not that hard. Spec. Uh, roughness. Don't flip it. Let's also do the metal material. Okay, and then lastly, the top. Spec. Normal. All right, now you can see our uh, model is uploaded on a Sketchfab. Now all that's to do is just uh let's see choose a lighting setup you like maybe something like that that one's kind of cool but i just want to show it off in kind of a neutral lighting so this one looks good all right so uh, then I also like to add we can just add ground chatter for this and might as well add some lights too then uh, materials are done post processing I like to turn on screen space reflections SSAO uh, sharpness but you know turn it down Chromatic aberration, I don't do that. Or if I do, it's like very, very slight. Vignette, no. Bloom, no. Tone mapping, no. Color maps, no. And then, all right, then I just hit save settings. And there we go. And uh, alternatively, you could upload this into your game engine, but yeah, that's a good result. Now just make uh, some renders for ArtStation, and you'll be good to go. Alright, I'm going to stop recording. Uh, I hope you liked this tutorial. Uh, this was a little simpler, so I hope it is easier to follow along. I think the end result is pretty good. Uh, let me know if you're interested in it, seeing anything else. Uh, yeah, and I guess just comment if you have any questions. Alright, uh, see you in the next video.